What is going on guys? Welcome back. In the last video we took a look at the Motoroid Ingram and Bulldog set from Pat Labor. Today we're taking a look at the next one out in that series. It is the Helldiver. This very cool box art here, vertical style box art there. This is a kind of dark shadowy image of the Helldiver looking very cool. And it's a really cool looking kit. It really reminds me a lot of the Gun Easy from Victory Gundam, to be honest, in terms of it's just like the color and design of it. But anyway, it's a really unique design, so let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so again, yeah, that box art looks fantastic. You can see a couple of hell divers on there, and even the font down there with that nice red glow does look very cool. Here from Good Smile Company, looks really nice. Around here on the sides of the box, basically gonna be the same thing, just cropped in different ways there like that. And then on the top and bottom, you've got the Pet Labor logo in dark green instead of white on this one, so that looks really nice. And around here on the back as well, you've got a look at what the kit is gonna look like, a built up and painted version of that. So it's got like this kind of uh, mini gun sort of looking thing there on its arm, looks very cool. You got these panels on the legs which open up, those look really nice as well too. Down here you can just see uh, what a team of them looks like. And honestly, this would have been cool if they would have sold this kit as like a two pack, that would have been nice. But I guess if there's like usually meant to be three in a unit, I don't know. But if it's pictured as three, maybe a three pack would have been cool. I'm sure plenty of people would have bought it. Or if you could get one kit on its own, or you could also buy a three pack that probably would have been cool so let's go ahead and pull everything on out of here and see what we got so do we have some decals yeah it does look like we have a little bit for any sort of stickers or marking decals on it it looks like this is all you're gonna get basically a couple little ones there in white and that is all and then we've got our instructions which just has the same uh, image there as what's on the front of the box and on the inside here we should have a little bit more there's a look what that's gonna look like front and back with the decals. One good decals go one of the decals goes on the chest and the other one goes on the backpack. Basically, that's the extent of that. And there's a couple of action poses there, like what we saw on the box. And then our parts list over here. And once again, the entire manual is all in color, so it should make your life pretty easy for you. And that all looks relatively simple, straightforward. So let's go ahead and check out all the runners. All right, so first runner here, runner A, is in that dark green color. So you can see there's some of our hand parts up there across the top and some of those parts with the big holes in there for the legs around here at the bottom. And runner B as well as some more armor pieces here in dark green, but there you can see we got some pre-printing on this part with some white and some orange painted on there for around the hip section. Runner C as well as molded in dark green and once again has some pre-painting on there for this blue part right there. But interestingly, we have two of the C runner and only one of them is pre-painted. So I'm guessing maybe we only need one of that part and this is just an extra part that you will not use and that's why they didn't bother painting that. And then some more dark green parts here on the D runner as well. Once again, we've got two of this runner. Runner E is our clear runner with the visor. It looks like we've got one, two, three different versions of the visor. One in plain clear, one pre-painted with clear blue and the other one with the kind of clear fluorescent orange. And runner F now getting into some gray kind of internal joint parts and things like that. But once again, some pre-painting on here, some dark blue painted on those parts there, which look to be probably parts for the feet, I'd imagine. Runner G here as well is just in that gray color there. You can see some weapons parts and a few other different joint parts on there. And then runner H in this interesting yellowish green color here is all some joint parts and things like that. And the same thing here for our last runner, runner I is in that same color, just some more joint parts and all that here. So there you have it guys, it's looking very cool. That dark green, I think, just straight out of the box, probably not gonna be looking all that great, uh, but we'll see once I get it all built up. Let me go ahead and do that, and then we'll see how she looks. All right guys, so here it is all built up, definitely looking very cool. Um, very, very detailed, and basically gonna be very similar in terms of the construction and like posability, the articulation, everything, to the Ingram kit that we just took a look at previously. So if you guys watched that review, you should have a pretty good idea of what to expect from this kit. Uh, obviously, it's gonna be quite similar. But once again here, we're packing a nice amount of detail in a pretty small package with this only being about the size of kind of your standard HG kit. While the kit doesn't necessarily come with a ton of different uh, accessories and things like that, you have a couple of things which do provide you with some nice options. So let's go ahead and check them out. So for our hand options for this, we've got the closed fist, which I've got there on the kit at the moment. And you've got your set of left and right open hands like this and then left and right holding hands. No trigger finger hands included with this one as you don't really have anything that's held in the hand as a kind of weapon that would need a trigger finger anyway. So this would be your uh, machine gun kind of weapon here like this, which just plugs onto the top of the forearm, interestingly, like so, just right onto there like that. So it's gonna take a little bit of maneuvering to get this around to a position where you could have your other hand 
uh, with a holding hand on there, holding on to this uh, handle up there on the top, but you can do that, and I'll demonstrate that here in a little bit. Uh, then our other weapon here would just be the knife, which is just stored in here like this, and that's pretty tight in there, so be careful. If you're planning on painting this and then putting it in there, I would not recommend that because then that's just gonna immediately scratch off all the paint. Uh, but that looks pretty nice just as it is, and that'll just fit into the hand, and then this plugs onto the back here by swapping out this piece right there. Kind of tricky to get that off, but there, once that is off, then you can swap that for this one and have that stored right on his back right there. And while we're here, here is where you can plug this onto an action base adapter if you wanted to have this in some sort of aerial pose. Where on the Ingram kit that was up underneath there, this one doesn't have anything up underneath, you'd have to drill a hole in there if you wanted that. Uh, this one is just right there on the backpack. And then also we have the alternate head as well too, which has a blue visor instead of orange, and then the top of the head is blue instead of just dark green like that. So I'm not sure if that's to do with like a commander type or something like that. I don't know actually offhand. You guys can let me know down in the comment section below, but both of them look really cool. And of course you can mix and match if you wanted the blue top of the head there with the orange visor or vice versa or something, you could do that. So while we're here, let's check out the articulation. The head will not go as far up as the Ingrams did. It had a really nice good upward angle. This one doesn't really, that's about kind of the extent of it and then down only to there. So up and down movement of this head is gonna be a little bit limited, unfortunately. Around here on the back of the head too, we have a seam line going down the back of the head, which wouldn't that be that big of a deal, except it goes right through that little circular detail there, which is gonna be a real pain. <laughs> I'm not sure how I'm gonna go about doing that but that's gonna be kind of a, a hard one to get rid of. And here in the waist section, we've got some rotation, and that's just on a ball joint, so you can angle that side to side, forward and back movement here between the top and bottom half of the body there. And then shoulder joint, once again, will swing out very far forward, all the way like that to a very unnatural point, but you can do that. It won't swing backwards at all though. Here for the shoulder armor, you will have a seam line going down the middle of that too, unfortunately, and that will move up and down on its own like that. And then you can move the arm up, all the way up to there, which is a pretty good upward angle of that. And then you got some rotation there and also some rotation here at uh, kind of below the elbow as well. You can rotate that part there separately like that. It's a little bit tight, a little bit tricky to do it, but there you go. The elbow joint is gonna give you a pretty good bend there for that. And then your wrist is just on a ball joint, so pretty standard there. Down here at the hip section, once again, we just have some rotation forward and back that's pretty unhindered. Out to the side, you can also get a pretty wide uh, angle there before these thigh parts start to run into the waist. So that's pretty good. Then you got some rotation there at the top of the leg as well. Once again, we've got a nice knee bend, which is going to go to about there. I guess that's the extent of it. It seems like it should go a little bit more, but apparently not. So that's going to be the extent of our knee bend, which is not too bad like that. This knee armor doesn't separate. That's just connected here with the front of the leg. But we do have this opening gimmick here on the side of the leg that opens up and then you got all that nice internal detail there, which looks really cool, especially once that's all painted, that'll look nice. And then for the foot, we've got no toe bend here. So it's just one chunk that will move forward and back. And then also a little bit side to side, just on a ball joint there. And then up underneath the feet, you got uh, some good detail there as well too. And then for a size comparison, here it is compared with your average HG144 scale size Gundam kit. So you can see it's a little bit taller and it's actually maybe slightly taller than the Ingram as well too. So it's a pretty good size. It's still, it's gonna be kind of generally about the size of a 144 scale Gundam kit, but a little bit larger in this case. So there you have it guys, it's definitely a very cool kit, and another thing that I haven't mentioned it too about is just the clear parts there in the chest as well too, just being cl uh, plain clear as they are, they're not really very visible because they're plain clear parts in a very dark body there, so definitely getting some like silver paint or something in behind there and then some clear color, like clear orange or something like that, again on top of those or clear yellow could also look very cool just to help uh, use those clear parts in a way that they're a bit more visible because as it is, they're just kind of hiding there. You can't really appreciate those. But there are a lot of really nice details on this and it's just a really cool design. The whole like concept of like all the holes in the armor and stuff, it's kind of a very unique look for this. Uh, so it definitely has that sort of like grunt look, I think just because of kind of the general design of the head with the visor and everything, of course it just reminds us of the uh, gyms from the Gundam universe, but definitely this is one that would appeal to any of you grunt lovers. And again, it's just a shame that they didn't sell this at all, like, or just make this also available as like a set of two or a set of three or something. I think that would have been cool. I mean, it's great that they sell it just as the single set. I think it would have been great to also release a version of this that comes with maybe three in the box, and then also comes with some more different weapons and accessories or things like that. I don't know exactly what that would be, but I think that would have been something cool. And who knows, maybe something like that will come out uh, later in the future. I'm not sure if, uh, you know, they're gonna be doing any other 
uh, Palibor kits in the Moderoid line. Maybe this is the extent of it, but who knows if they're you know popular. I'm sure maybe they'll probably still make some more. Uh, so if you're interested, I mean, check the kits out. They're pretty cool. You guys can do that at the USA Gundam store. The link to the site will be down in the video description below, as well as my coupon code there, as always, for you guys to use. If you have any of the further questions or comments about the kit, of course, feel free to leave those down below in the comment section as well, too. Uh, always like hearing from you guys. And of course, thank you all so much for your support, liking the video, commenting, subscribing, all that. It's greatly appreciated as well, too. So until next time, guys, hope you're all having a great day. I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.